Hunter x Hunter episode 118. We're going for it. For our pride as men. Nothing's gonna stop Knuckle and Shooter at this point. Not Yupi, not being on the verge of death, not the narrator, nothing. If you're gonna take revenge, do it with tears in your eyes. I can't even really put it into words. There's something so cool about it. It's like terrible. It's the, it's wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. But please do it. So very weirdly, not at all the connection you'd expect me to make here. What this reminds me of is Burning Fields from March Comes in Like a Lion. For anyone who hasn't seen the show, it's really just a small subsection mini arc of a otherwise unimportant character as he like sacrifices his whole life and everything that like to everyone watching feels like it's more important for a victory in Shogi. And like his life is crumbling around him, you know, and all he can think about is winning this this tournament at like, I don't know, he's 80 or something like that. By the way, come to think of it, this is spoiled from March comes with like a lion, so you might want to skip ahead. But the whole time I was watching it in the reactions, I'm like talking about the victory in one specific domain of life is not as important as victory in life generally, and sort of a predictable rant along my usual vein of zoom out and you're mistaking the thing you actually want for a symbol of the thing you want. It's signal, not source. It's a reflection of real beauty. And then he wins. And then everything immediately cracks into place. And you're like, oh, I was wrong. I remember a long time ago in a Q&A, I got a question of, has anything you've seen in shows significantly changed your mind? And my answer to that at the time was, I don't know if I've completely reversed course on anything, though I have definitely learned a lot and expanded my, my field of, of view. That is the clearest example of a time where I'm like, oh, I was just wrong. I was totally wrong. And there's something I need to think about here and consider about really high pursuits and just one single point of focus thing at the cost of all else. Burning field still, still burns in my mind to this day. I don't think Knuckle and Shoot need to fight. I think there are other paths they could go. It would be just as great and amazing. But I think in this situation and Burning Fields, the key factor that that misses is that it probably is at that exact moment, them following exactly what they need to given who they are at the time. And another key factor of it is that they're doing it very openly and honestly. There's not really a lot of delusion in it. Like Knuckles crying as he makes the speech because he's seeing the full picture for the most part about how he could leave and it would be smart. And in some way he is letting down other people. You know, I'm sorry, master. And he probably will die and it might all be for nothing, but he's answering to himself. And I know very deeply in certain moments doing in what some metrics or conventional metrics or what other people would consider to be the wrong thing is the right thing for you in that moment. And like Burning Fields, the final assessment of this will largely come down to like how it turns out. Like the optimal best, most amazing thing is he actually destroys Yuppie. At that point, no one can say anything about that choice. And then pile in on top of that, the respect for having the guts. A X false X rage. There's something just so animalistically understandable about it and beautiful and honorable and also really stupid. I guess the selection isn't happening at this point, right? Uh, it's also hilarious that Yuppie, of all people, is undergoing this tremendous growth. It also reminds me of, uh, damn, what's his name? From the Phantom Troop, the really loud one. Uvugin, just this fighting in this leveled earth. Now, I'm, I'm imagine facing this. You'd be also a surprisingly amazing judge of character, even without <laughs> oops, emotional reading. Yes! He's deliberately cultivating this power. Oh, I still have a bad feeling about Moral. I've had a bad feeling that's been dragged out for four episodes now. I think we're about to see the full circle of Moral's philosophy. This is this is amazing. This is exactly Moral's gambit. I'm sleeping, right? And he did it in truly beautiful and elegant form. It's very glamorous and glittery. There is a remote possibility that this is being played for attention, and that actually Moral has a bigger sub gambit going on. He just left. And maps. Said the wrong name. Curious how, what are the conditions for him parasiting someone? Like, do they need low HP? That's usually how that works. You're not just kill him. Oh, 
Don't announce your presence. I don't think you want to face him in this dragonfly form. I I, this guy's not that powerful. He doesn't really. Hey, he doesn't even know Palm, right? Are you are you Palm? Please, I just want to live in my my dollhouse. Kanojo wa kore ga chokan nioru chusei shin o hakaru shiken da to omotte ita. I feel like that's actually a very reasonable thing that would happen. Yeah. They're scared for their lives at all times. Is it a Nen message? I'm so curious what, where Pam is right now. This does not have Gyo. Yeah, I mean, fair. She wasn't just going to be in the house chilling. Drives truck angrily. For this person that he's never even met. No small parts. Okay. All roses to lead, lead to destroying Bravada. Though honestly, Lobster Gun feels like a terrible matchup for Flying Dragonfly. What with its delicate wings. Ikongo is the character class that I always think is really cool and want to play with, but then don't. Like the Beastmaster, or the one that can turn enemy units into allies. He's just waiting there. Hit him with your truck! Oh, he's playing into it. I do deliberately because I don't like him that much. I believe in using people's original names. Oh, God. Should have hit him with the truck. He's... it's alright. He's not in there. This is actually really good because they don't know it's Ikago. They just think it's Dragonfly Dude, who's now a corpse. I think I know Ikago's next form. Oh, you're calling him Hagi now, too. Close one. Blank slate. I mean, I was in the cave. I was in the cave this whole time. He feels awfully vulnerable in this form. Oh, he didn't know. Throw something of weight in there. <laughs> That's some quick math. Exponential math is not easy either. That's all. No problem. But my pride is a man. Well, yes, please wait a little bit. That's a long time. That's like 10 episodes. <laughs> also, why do they seem like such a great matchup? Their personalities. He also figured this out so fast and developed mastery of it. There's a chance for Knuckle to do something really satisfying, in the same vein or light of what makes Yuppie's realization cool. Knuckle also is seemingly compromised by emotion. Does he have that, like, one extra level of higher cognition to use that as a tool and not be blinded by it so that he rushes into an obvious trap? It's a really cool and maybe underrated ability to be able to force calmness to simultaneously have the strong, pressing emotions screaming at you, and also, on a certain really important level, maintain a sense of calm. I don't think you can develop that instantly in a moment. It's something that takes a lot of practice. But I do have this strong feeling from limited experience that if you're able to grab yourself and pull yourself back a little bit, it's almost like time slows down and you're able to see things a lot more transparently. And speaking of Gunji and levels of contest and battle, you're suddenly like playing from a different dimension that cannot be touched by like whatever the, the emotional charge and conflict is in the situation. People get a little bit flustered by that. They don't understand why they're not winning. You know, their, their attacks or their outbursts suddenly are not landing. It's hard to fully conceptualize, but I don't even think it's outside of the emotion. In fact, I think the emotion may be leading. It just depends on what the emotion and motivation is. I think sometimes it's a very, very high state of determination that does it. Or like importance and significance beyond your impulse and how you're feeling. That's where a lot of the cool character stuff could happen for, for Knuckle in this moment. Oh, he called him a lump. 
どっちがゴキブリか教えてやるよ<laughs> Don't forget he's missing an eye. <laughs> that could be crucial. This trash talk though is great. That's the that's the gong. <laughs> the sweat just flies off. Oh, he's gonna cancel. He's gonna cancel. <laughs> two punches. We need two punches. It's not satisfying unless it's two punches. One for shoot. I don't know if this is the right time to be reflecting on this. I give you a million answers to that question. All your prior preconceptions went out the window when this mission started. Right. He's not just defending shoot. I mean, he's defending some ideal of beauty that he has. One of the ideas that I really like that I think occurred to me during My Hero Academia is this conceptualization of, of beauty as not really belonging to anyone. It's kind of like a fire that can be spread. And no one is the fire. Like, no one is that source. Just through a lot of work and strong character and real belief in things and just poignant, brutal awareness of the significance of things, you can become a vessel for it and often occurs when spread from one person who possesses it to the observer who understands what they're seeing. I like that metaphor a lot because there's something both humble and also really self-gratifying about it where there are forces that are greater than us and not about us and not created by us, but there's a real nobility in being that sort of torch holder. Like you see greatness and you correctly attribute what the greatness is. You know, it's not necessarily a flesh and blood person. That person's greatness is their ability to have cultivated themselves into something that can like handle that sort of greatness. They can wield it and then you do your part by being the, the next link in the chain, etc, etc. And that is something worth defending and worth trying to uphold. Shoot really surprised himself at being more capable than he thought he was. When push came to shove, he was that person. He had this moment in time of really great beauty and sacrifice and honor. And Knuckle, who's so like, I don't know how to put this, open, sensitive to beauty, moved by greatness, is so, so fixated on what that is and, and dedicated to it that I think that's what he's trying to protect. That is something really meaningful to him. And of course, Shoot as well. It's not only that, it's Shoot as the person. But I think that maybe is the disconnect between like, where did, where's this coming from? I never really was that close to shoot. There's something more than just shoot that he's feeling. That's also why he's like crying. It's Knuckles code. Control yourself, please. A little bit. Oh, getting greedy now. I'm waiting for the narrator to take a dig at him. Time froze? Yeah, I was just saying that, right? But, 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 maybe think clearly now. Uh oh. This took a turn. Adjust yourself in midair somehow! He was not ready for this. He was not ready for this. Oh, I don't want to watch. Don't give up yet. You punch his punch! I don't know, do something. That looks a giant fist. What? Don't give up. Boss. Minna. And he thinks of everyone else. I don't want to accept it. I'm not accepting it yet. There's something else. Something else is coming. Narukami. Yes! Outside help. That's one. One more. Is it Kalua? Give him a second one. This one's for shoot. Oh, he's just stacking him up. That's <laughs> so satisfying. How many was that? And hit him with a drop kick while you're at it. How much interest was that? Was it because of the eye that you couldn't see the lightning from above? You did it. Okay, look, our ego is restored. We can leave now. <laughs> okay, right, right. You've done your part. This is very golden like right? Look, clear the area first for celebrating. I want to enjoy, but I'm also terrified because it's Yuppie. I feel like this will be real rage now. You got knocked the F out. Oh, he's invisible. It's a Malaria and Kilua tag team. But he's looking ripped. He looks adult. He looks like he aged four years <laughs> in ten minutes. Watch Kilua just solo Yubi now. <laughs> Damn, I just sort of get sense with sorry to Yubi. 
I mean, in light of the Gon fight, who cares about Yuppie? We got bigger problems. This is light work compared to the, the emotional damage of fights with friends. Perspective is everything. Okay. Oof. I just had a huge rush of adrenaline at the realization that Knuckle was not going to die yet. Like I said, it is very Gon-like. It's very similar to what we saw with Ahsoka. It wasn't beating Ahsoka necessarily. It wasn't defeating him. It was, I'm going to come in here and deliver this punch. I still feel really torn about it because I get it and I love it. I also feel like it's not the best thing. But just overall, I think your relationship with yourself is really important. And sometimes you're in situations where, you know, there are a whole bunch of factors, your fear, your anxiety, expectations of others. You're heading down a certain particular path by default. And then you're like, is this the kind of person I am? Is this who I want to be? How can I look at myself in the mirror if this is the way I'm going to behave? Is this all that I have to offer? And it's tricky because it might be a poorly conceptualized vision of what's actually actually important for you. You don't want to end up doing everything just because you're afraid you can't do something, for example. But then again, it's an important instinct. It's an important tool to cultivate because like, what else do you have, you know? I think it can be a really cool tool and this doesn't always work. It's just something in the arsenal, right? Where you think about your life as a, as a narrative or as a story or, or as a show with limits, of course, with sort of a question of what would be the most satisfying thing I could possibly do? Like fears aside, expectations aside, conventional wisdom aside, what would be like the coolest story for myself? What would I do next that if this were a, a drama or an anime or whatever, it would be like the the best writing choice, you know? Of course, like I said, there are limits. It's very important to be ethical. Obviously, you want to tread lightly and have caution, but it is a really cool thing to think about. In those situations, it's not so much the outcome as it is the fact that you, you faced like an inner challenge and there was something you really wanted to believe in about yourself and then you matched it. Again, a risk of that is you don't want to live just trying to reinforce your previously held conceptions of the world. We've seen that as a danger for Gon, where he wants to believe himself just capable of everything and there's no obstacles and he's already this sort of masterful person worthy of Jing's love that he never really got. So anything that does not go his way is a threat. But in Knuckles' case, for whatever reason, I like it given that he survived. Though I think it might have been a little more satisfying if it didn't come with intervention from Kalua. Nevertheless, there was the facing of the fear. There was the acceptance of the consequences. There was the motivation, which was like, I'm going to be the next bearer of this torch for others. You know, like his final thoughts were of everyone for shoot, for honor, for pride. It's not complete, but it's really cool that like one man would go in there and face something like you be alone. <laughs>